Hello everybody and welcome to Wesley's Plant World with me Wesley Peterson and today I am sitting out in the area of my garden called the Garden of New Beginnings because I want to do a video about one specific and fantastic plant at this time of year. It's now March 2024 and during this time we have one plant in our garden that flowers so amazingly with pink flowers all over it and it's the one to my left here. The name of this plant is Daphne Mesereum and it is just fabulous. So this plant grows wildly in the south of Sweden here where I live. It's nothing that gets planted. It pops up here and there and all over the place in my garden and it's absolutely fantastic. It has the most amazing fragrant smell. It's a very strong smell. It's a very pretty smell. It's a nice smell. And they just look gorgeous. Now the flowers, they come out on bare stems and they're the first thing that comes out on the plant every new late spring season. Well, I say late spring, they actually start flowering during the winter. Their common names are, for example, February Daphne, and that is because they can flower from February all the way up to April. And these plants in my garden have been flowering for the last couple of weeks here during March. So it's absolutely fabulous. So it gets these pink flowers on the bare stems. And then when the flowers are fading away, then the leaves will start coming out. And these are starting to produce leaves at the top tips of all of their stems. And then it will get lovely light greeny silvery kind of leaves all over they're very pretty leaves as well it's a very pretty plant in all phases of its development each season and even the bare stems and trunks look quite interesting and look quite exotic to me but they look very succulent kind of type they're kind of chunky and they just they just give this thrill when you see them popping up with pink flowers everywhere in the garden so there are quite a few different things to know about this plant and I'd like to first start with the fact that I had so many of these plants in my garden that I decided that I wanted to move a lot into a border in my botanical garden and have an arrangement of them and that was a huge mistake. Never do that. This plant absolutely hates to be moved and hates to have its roots touched and you will have a 90% chance of this plant dying if you try and move it. The only way you can move it is if you can excavate the whole soil mass that the roots are in, in a huge ball, much bigger than the plant, so that if you lifted it and moved it, it wouldn't know that it's been moved, maybe that would work. But if you dig around it and pull it up and get bare roots and then try and plant that plant again, the success rate would be very, very dim. I'm telling you, I've tried it, it was a huge mistake. So I lost lots of plants and I'm just telling you that very clearly in this video because if you see them in your garden growing and you like them and you want to keep them, you'll have to let the plant stay where it is to get the best chance of keeping it coming up every, every year. It is a perennial and it grows bigger and bigger with time so it will look amazing if it's not completely in the wrong place for you. But no, I did that and I lost a few very big examples and I'm very upset about that, but I've learned my lesson now. So all the plants that I have left that are a little bit more mature like this one, I will never touch. They will get to just carry on growing and naturalizing in my garden as they wish, because I just love this plant and I know that it's very tender and doesn't like to be moved at all. So that said, we can get on with some more facts about the plant. The plant, after it starts flowering, gets beautiful red berries, bright red berries all over. They look very tantalizing. They look like something that you could go out and eat and harvest, but do not. That is a big no, no, no. This plant is <laughs> highly toxic. It's highly toxic to cats. It's highly toxic to dogs. It's highly toxic to horses. It's highly toxic to livestock. And it is highly toxic to humans. Do not ingest this plant in any way. And when working with the plant, make sure you have gloves on. It is highly toxic. And it's highly toxic because it has two specific substances in it that are irritants for the anatomy. And those are mesorrhine and daphne. And they cause an irritation in the throat. So if you try and even just eat the bark or the flowers or the berries when they come out and the seeds and so forth, you will get burning sensation in your mouth and down into your body and you, you will just not be able to breathe after a certain amount of time. It can be very, very harmful. So I'm strongly telling you this is a very poisonous plant 
and it's just to be observed and enjoyed as it is. It's very pretty, it's very beautiful. The flowers are highly fragrant and smell gorgeous. You can smell the flowers, but just don't eat them. And it is a fact that the seeds inside of the red berries are the part that are the most toxic of all. So if you should get the berry in your mouth some way, and you have just the flesh and you manage to spit out the pips, it's going to be poisonous, it's going to be very, very bad for you. Seek out a doctor or the hospital straight away. But if you should chew and eat the seeds, you will be in a lot of trouble. So remember, a toxic plant, a toxic beauty, we can say. <laughs> this plant in my garden seems to grow in all the areas where it's a little bit more woodlandy. It seems to like all the leaves on the ground, the very mulchy kind of soil, but it is a plant that can grow in all sorts of different types of soil. The only thing that's important is that the roots are kept moist. It does like to stay moist in its roots. It doesn't like to dry out too much. And that's why it seems to be naturalizing in places where there's a lot of leaf litter, rich loamy soil, and yeah, it can keep moist as long as possible. These plants have no problem because, I mean, they're, they're growing wildly and I'm not doing anything with them. And this one is right on the edge, as I said, of my little heart pond and doing very, very well close to this hazelnut bush. So this plant is a part of the family Phymelaceae. So this is a plant that grows in many parts of the world. So here in Scandinavia, for example, it grows naturally and then it grows in Russia, it grows in Western Asia, and it grows in most parts of Europe. So it's a widespread plant, but even though it is, in many places, it is an endangered species of plant because you'll only see them sparsely dispersed in certain areas around and about. So it's not like they're very prolific all over the place. I feel lucky here where I live in the south of Sweden because as I said, I had loads of these plants in my garden and that's why I moved them around. And when I go for a walk in the forest area, I see them growing along the pathway and so forth out there. So they grow very well here because the birds that these seeds of this plant aren't toxic to spread the seeds around and the plants manage to grow up very easily. So it's doing really, really well where I am. So I'm very, very pleased that we have this gorgeous looking plant just growing naturally here. So the leaves, when they come out on this plant, they kind of arrange themselves spirally and they can be around three to eight centimeters long and one to two centimeters wide. So you can hear they're kind of long, thin leaves. They're very pretty leaves actually. And the actual plant itself, even though it's a slow growing plant, can get to around 1.5 meters tall and 1.5 meters wide so it can get into quite a big bush with time but very often it's seen smaller around half that size and then it gets a thicker and thicker trunk in the bottom as well and thicker stems as it grows out. It's said that this plant likes light shady areas to full sun and I've found that my plants are naturally growing in those kind of areas as I said they're mostly growing in the woodlandy area of my garden where it's semi shade shade and then in a spot like this where it gets some of the bright direct sunshine that's coming around from the east towards the south and then there'll be some shade from the trees again so it gets some direct light but then dappled light again so this plant can cope from shade to bright sunshine but if it's in bright sunshine it will need a lot more water because as i said before it needs to keep its roots constantly moist to stay happy so all this said I just want to take you for a little wonder around the areas of my garden where I still have some of these plants left that I missed when I went on my rampage and pulled a lot up. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Well, I still have those ones going on. They're maturing out, they're looking good, and I want to show you those. And the birds are distributing more of this plant in my garden again, so there will be a lot more coming up with time. And now I know I just will leave them where they are and enjoy them as the beauties they are and this beautiful fragrance I'm getting. So let's go. So let's go around and find the Staphany Mesoreum and we'll start by walking through Silverway here because I know I have a lovely example here in my triangle garden. And look here, you can see in the middle next to my rhododendron and my holly bush. I'll just get inside the border here and get closer. And you can see here this fabulous example, my annex in the background. But look at the beautiful flowers on this plant. And you can see as we go further down, it's growing out its flowers. 
on bare stalks and have a look at those gorgeous pink flowers. Beautifully scented. Look at that. They do brighten up the garden every single year, February, March and April. Look at them. On the top of this one, you can see some green leaves just about to emerge. But look at that. Beautiful pink flowers and the beautiful sound of birdsong behind in the background. So this is quite a big example that I have left in the middle of my triangle garden here. So let's carry on around my garden. We'll carry on around to the left here, out to the edge of Silver Way. And I did a video not long ago where I planted out a lot of boxes, Semperviras, Rotundifolia up on the edge of my grounds here. They're still doing very well. That's the boxwoods. So all along the edge of my grounds, you can see them here. Fabulous. So we'll carry on following this pathway around the back of my garden area. This is shield side where I have these boxes growing up here. Shield side garden. I even have a lovely little rhododendron that I planted out. I did a video about planting out rhododendrons as well not long ago and they're doing well. They got through the winter. But let's carry on now through this area of my garden. We're looking at the Japanese stone garden right now, full of stones. All looking quite bare still now, but it will be a hive of color soon. But what we're looking for right now are these Daphne Mesoreum. So I know I have another example at the back of my garden, right at the back here. So we're going through crystal woods until we get right to the back. And I know I have another bigger example outside on the edge of my grounds. Oh, I have one actually, look here. Hiding down in amongst all of, it's actually going to be easier if we go to the other side. I saw one hiding down in amongst the hazelnut bushes. Let's get out here. So where, yes, see, look at that. You can see one growing down under the Carula Savalana. Absolutely beautiful. And then we'll carry on the edge of my garden here. And then I have another big, beautiful example here. Just get on the right side of the sun. So here, look at this. Another beautiful example of Daphnia mesereum. Absolutely gorgeous pink flowers all over this plant. Look at those. Another plant that's grown out quite big. If we go all the way down, you can see the bottom in the soil. and the lovely pink flowers all over, and then the green leaves that are starting to come out on the top of the flowers. It's just amazing. Look at them. What a lovely pop of color now at the end of March. And they smell absolutely gorgeous. So there we go, there's another one. So let's carry on around my garden. This is the back roadway of our grounds that's hardly ever used by anybody. And then they block it off and put cows out in the field ahead there. Oh, this is not my ground, but we're going to actually carry on down this path because there are many more examples here. Look here, there are two here. Look at this one there. And then just ahead, another one. Look how amazing they are. Big examples. 
and then I can see a huge bush ahead of us here. I just have to show you this before we carry on. This is showing you how big they can get because these plants can get to around 1.5 meters high and wide. Look at this one. It's like a small tree. Look at that example. And look at its thick trunk. That is amazing. Wow. Look at the colors on this. It's just gorgeous. It's full to the brim with flowers. Look at that. Oh, wow. Absolutely amazing. That trunk is so thick. This plant has been here a while and can't be moved because if it was moved, it would die. There would be a 90% chance it would die if it would move. So it's going to be left to look beautiful here for years to come. So anyway, back down the path <laughs> towards my own cottage. You can see our cottage. and annex in the distance there and the line that divides our grounds from the neighbors. So let's go and see if I can find any more growing wildly in my garden. The birds do such a great job of distributing this plant by eating the seeds because the seeds aren't toxic to birds, but they're toxic to all other animals, dogs and cats and horses and people. We cannot eat them. Let's see if I can find anything else in Crystal Woods here. So there's our annex in the distance there. Let's go down here. I haven't seen anything else so far. But there might be something down here in the wild orchard garden that we're entering now. Now we're in the wild orchard garden and I know I have one down here actually. So let's carry on and see where that one was. Yes, not one, I have a few. So here on the left path in the wild orchard garden, I have a little one, look at this. There we go. A little thin stem. So I should make sure to protect this plant so it can carry on growing out there. That was wonderful. So we're going to have to go up through Bonfire Garden here and then around to the right and we will see some more plants here in this left pathway of the Wild Orchard Garden. And look down here, another plant. Look at that. Again, all of these beautiful pink flowers doing really well growing up down here amongst the moss covered rocks and the spruce trees and so forth. So that's wonderful. Did I have any more along this pathway here? Yes, I did. So look in here. I'm going to zoom in now. There you go. You can see one growing there. And I think that's about it for now. But here, you can see the plants underneath my Carulus avalana again growing out beautifully in our crystal cottage behind. There you go, with their beautiful flowers here. Lots of them on this plant as well. Just absolutely amazing. Look at that. Happily growing under this hazelnut bush. And on the edge of our little heart pond. 
So I really hope you enjoyed going for a little walk around my garden to see where these plants are just naturalizing by themselves. And it just gives me so much joy that I wanted to make this video right now in the moment while these plants are looking at their best with their flowers. And then not long from now, they will be smothered, every single plant with bright red berries, which is also a fantastic show all by itself as well. So I'm just going to enjoy these plants as they carry on doing their own thing. So all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching this video. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.